freetalklive.com here in the studio tonight. It's Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Let's go to the news out of Detroit. I uh, mentioned it earlier, and I think this is a big story. I actually first saw it over at fr33agents.com, and they linked to a more detailed piece at thedaily.com. Talking about what's happening in Detroit, where recently we read news about how the Detroit Police Department has decided to cut back on their hours. Isn't that interesting? This is one of the biggest cities in America, even still with all the with the huge drop off in population they've had. I, Detroit's yeah. still a big place, and major market. They've cut back their police department hours to eight hours a day. So instead of it being twenty four hours a day, you could go in and get your service from the police department. Now. If it's not business hours, you're SOL. So your house gets robbed. Well, you want to go in and file a report? Guess you'll have to wait till tomorrow morning or whatever. They're just not even open. They're anymore. really just setting business hours for criminals. They're just telling the, right. the criminals what hours they should do business. And in some parts of Detroit, they've actually Crazy. shut off the street lights because they claim that they don't have enough money. And so all you poor neighborhood people, uh, you're just going to have to do without street lights. And you were talking about you want to talk about attracting criminals. Uh, it's been shown in studies that it's street lights that cut down on crime more so than video cameras or any other sort of uh, crime prevention techniques that I'm I'm aware of. I bet they've Dogs. still got money to indoctrinate the children. Oh, you as far as running their government schools? Your single oh, yeah. best crime reduction dollar is a dog. But if you're on the street, uh, sure, you can't have a dog with you everywhere street you go. Street lights are the next. So – what is happening? I mean, if if the De- Detroit police are are slicing back on their level of service, what is happening? The, well, it turns out, looks like the marketplace is stepping in. A lot of times when we talk about private protection services on this show, we're accused of being pie in the sky. Like, you, what are you talking about? We've got the government police, and they're the you know they're the best police force in the world, and you know they may have their problems, but you can't have the market handle this. It'll be too confusing. They'll be fighting each other, and you know, there's all <laughs> kinds of uh, you know scary stories out there and ideas about how this won't work. It'll be like Somalia, which, of course, if you actually look at what's going on in Somalia, you find out that what's really happening there is there are different interests, governmental interests, people that want to be the government of Somalia fighting out with one another uh, uh, to try to take over. I think the biggest problem with Somalia is that uh, the UN, uh, basically, you know, with the, the United States you know, right there in the lead, is attempting to foist a governmental That's system. That's what I just said. Yeah, they're, they're Different interest groups fighting over who will be the government in Somalia. The UN. They're being trying one to of those impose groups. a government. Um, there, and there are multiple people that are interested in being the government, not just Somalia the UN. has a history of, of being a stateless society that runs essentially these clans uh, situations, and people opt in and opt out of these uh, clans. Uh, so you know, I'm not sure entirely that go- Somalia had a government at any point, except when uh, they, you know, they were uh, back in the 50s and, and 60s. I don't know if we can compare Detroit to Somalia, really. I, no, but the, have, the comparisons will be made inevitably when you start talking cholera. <laughs> when you start talking about getting the government out of things that they've traditionally always been in for our whole lives, people will bring up, "Well, why don't you move to Somalia?" It's a pretty big leap, as though it's an example, as though Somalia is the uh, you know uh, example of the stateless society, but it's not. It's an example of a society in which people are fighting over becoming the state. So anyway. Uh, to the news here from the daily.com the people of detroit are taking no prisoners justifiable homicide in the city shot up 79% in 2011 from the previous year as citizens in the long suffering city armed themselves and took matters into their own hands which is of course what the police always tell people not to do don't take the law into your own hands call us we'll come to the rescue but if they're not coming to the rescue, as has been pointed out earlier on the show tonight, the police have no obligation to provide you with any protection services. If they don't come to the rescue, then what do you do? You just sit and get victimized? Well, no, people aren't willing to do that. Yeah, people aren't willing to do that. Residents unable to rely on a dwindling police force to keep them safe are fighting back against the criminal scourge on their own, and they're offering no apologies. Detroit resident Julia Brown told The Daily, We have got a, a little old west up here in Detroit. That's what it's going to take. The last time Brown, 73, called the Detroit police, they didn't show up until the next day. So she applied for a permit to carry a handgun and says she's prepared to use it against the young thugs who've taken over her neighborhood, burglarizing entire blocks, opening fire at will, and terrorizing the elderly with impunity. She says, I don't intend to be one of their victims. She's, by the way, lived in Detroit since the late 1950s. She says, I'm planning on taking one out. Wow. How old is Granny? 
73. Well, gosh I, darn. I admire her courage and her willingness to stand up for herself. How it got this bad in Detroit has become a point of national discussion. Violent crime settled into the city's bones decades ago, but recently as the numbers of police officers have plummeted and police response times have remained distressingly high, citizens have taken to dealing with things themselves. In this city of about 700,000 people, the number of cops has steadily fallen from about 5,000 a decade, a decade ago to fewer than 3,000 today. Detroit homicides, the second highest per capita in the country last year, according to the FBI, rose by 10% in 2011 to 344 people. On a bleak day in January, a group of funeral directors, wearied by the violence, drove a motorcade of hearses through the city streets in protest. Average police response time for priority calls in the city, according to latest data, is 24 minutes. In comparable cities across the country, it is under 10 minutes. And as you pointed out, Mark, when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. In this case, nearly a half hour. Right. You know, I mean, I don't know how police ever became anything but what they are i mean you you call the police when there's a problem but they're the cleanup crew they come they write the paperwork they you know figure out what happened they try to uh, you know do a little arbitration they they collect the evidence they do that kind of thing it is the very rare circumstance where a cop is going to have the opportunity to throw himself in front of a bullet to protect some innocent person i'm not saying that they're not willing to do it there's just not enough of them and they cannot be where in all the these places at one time. Thank goodness there aren't enough of them. We don't need to pay. We're not supposed to be paying them to do this. I mean, do you want do you real you the citizen? Do you want to pay a cop's salary for him to follow you around and keep you safe? I mean, can you afford the eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars a year? Now, I'm no, not saying the I cops cannot. get paid that kind of salary. I'm saying that with their benefits and their early retirement, um, they you know usually work about twenty years, or at least they can work as few as twenty years. Right, and then collect ninety percent pension after that. With a response time of twenty four minutes, I would hope your biggest problem is your cat in the tree or something, because I, I wouldn't want to be in a life or death situation and have to call those police. Absolutely. Even ten minutes is you know, you're dead. I mean if if there's a real situation happening, yeah. you're, you're One not gonna help you. So the number of justifiable homicides has led c- citizens like Brown – of course, they're using this citizen term as though it means something. Uh, as we pointed out, citizen just means that uh, you have an uh, allegiance to the state in return for an obligation of protection. But clearly, there is no obligation to protect, as the people in Detroit have learned the hard way. The number of justifiable homicides in which residents use deadly force in self-defense jumped from 19 in 2010 to 34 last year. That's a 79 percent rise. Uh, signs that that vigilantism was taking hold in the city came earlier. Mm, there's not an extra eye in there. V- yeah, vigilantism uh, came earlier so around sure Memorial right. Day t- 2009 when former federal agent Alvin Davis decided he'd had enough of the uh, break-ins at his mother's home on the east side. She called the police again and again, but the brazen robberies continued. Davis, then a 32-year-old immigration and customs enforcement officer, snapped. Prosecutors said he spent days chasing and harassing the teenagers who were allegedly robbing his mother, even shoving his federally issued firearm into one of their mouths. No one was killed, but by the time he was done, Davis had racked up charges of unlawful imprisonment and assault. In August 2010, he was convicted and sentenced to four years in prison. But many residents in his mother's neighborhood are sympathetic to him whose case is on appeal. Ken Gray, 58, who lives down the street, says he basically did what a lot of us wished we could do. One high-ranking official in the country's le- in the county legal system speaking, speaking to the Daily said that the rise in justifiable homicides mirrors a local court system that's increasingly lenient of the practice. He said that it's a lot more acceptable now to get your own retribution, and the justice system in the city is a lot more understanding if people do that. It's becoming part of the culture. Detroiters are arming themselves with shotguns and handguns and buying guard dogs, anything to take care of their own. And privately, residents say neighborhood watch groups in Detroit are widely armed. There's more coming up Bet here they are. in a moment. 855-450-FREE, the SACL CAI toll free line. You can take control of the airwaves, and you can take care of your own uh, protection and defense, too, as Detroit's going to prove. It's free talk. All right, so we'll continue here with this story out of uh, Detroit, and then we'll take your calls and your thoughts. Uh, it doesn't have to be on this. You can bring up anything that you want. But I think this is huge news because you've said, Mark, that you believe that the policing issue is one of the last issues that people should should broach when it comes to talking about you know transitioning to the voluntary society yep. and it's a tough one for people to to really come to understand for me it was one of the last issues that i came came around on and it took me a little while to really kind of uh, wrap my mind around it 
But it's nice when you can actually point to reality and show people, hey, look, it's okay. Well, you can point to people and show them private roads in California where they function in Southern California, where we have private roads right now. Mm, alongside yep. public roads, and people choose to use the private ones because they can get where they want to go faster and safer. Well, but yeah, nobody but, wants to hear it. It's like, what about the roads? Why do libertarians <laughs> hate roads? Well, you, you have can't. a lot of examples of private security in California coming from Hollywood, too, because a lot of the celebrities have their own private defense. Sure, but that's easy to blow off because, well, it's only for the rich. What about the poor? Well, as you can see in Detroit, this is going to be addressed very well. There's mm-hmm. plenty of poor people in Detroit. These poor people are not getting services from the Detroit Police Department. Even though there's thousands of cops in Detroit, it's still – there. it's an average response time on a priority call is 24 minutes, which is far, far lower than the national average. The national average is like around 10 minutes. This is terrible. I mean the national average is terrible. This is worse. And so people are stepping up. They're forming neighborhood watch groups. They're getting armed. They're buying dogs. They are not only that, they're going to hire private protection services, as we'll tell you about here in a moment. So it's uh, like the militiamen who – this is from the daily.com. It's like the militiamen who stepped up way back when, says one resident. That's where the neighborhood folks are, said James Jackrabbit Jackson, a 63-year-old retired Detroit cop. I am not going to mess with that guy. <laughs> he's patrolled the Jefferson Chalmers neighborhood for years. He says they're ready to fight. We don't hardly see police anymore. The city's wealthier enclaves have hired private security firms. Intimidating men in armored trucks patrol streets lined with gracious old homes in a scene more likely seen in Mexico City than the United States. That kind of paid protection can run residents anywhere from 10 to $200 per month. And companies say business is good. Now look at that range. That's a huge price range. 10 to $200 per month for private protection services in Detroit. It makes you wonder... What I mean, how much of your property taxes go to, say, uh, you know, how, how much do you pay per month in property taxes for policing? Good question. And there's it's very difficult to know the answer to this. I suppose you can you have to get over, the city budget, pour, break it out, try to figure out what portion goes to the so on and so on. It'd be a but lot I'll of work. bet you it's more than ten dollars. I bet you're right. And I'll bet you you get. At the very least, I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't get any police services. Thank goodness in my town I don't have to pay for it, but I probably sort of in a roundabout way I pay for the uh, the stadies, um, you know, and I, they're not really patrolling. They're just driving by at, you know, some breakneck speed uh, because they don't have to worry about getting a ticket. Um, but when I've lived in towns, I always picked have always picked houses that are on dead end streets and that kind of thing, because I like that kind of atmosphere where the only people driving down my road I know who they are. I know whose car that is, who's driving past Mm -hmm. my house. And man, the 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 rarity with which I see would see police officers or sheriffs or whatever, it was incredible. What kind of protection am I getting? It's it's difficult to quantify. I'm not going to claim for one second. I will not claim that the very existence of a policing force doesn't cut down on crime, but I, the the existence of this force cut cuts down on crime too. No, it's more I, accountable. How many? Well, I guess we've all probably been on the inside of a police car, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, they take a picture here of this guy, Dale Brown, the owner of Threat Management Group. This is one of the private security firms offering services to people in Detroit. Uh, they've got a photo of the inside of his cruiser, if, whatever you want to call it. It's an SUV, essentially, or Hummer or something. And this guy is decked out. I mean, he's got, like, multiple cameras. <laughs> zombie. He's ready for a zombie attack. That thing looks better than the Batmobile. It looks awesome. He's got, like, a display up on the uh, kind of the, the top portion of the uh, the, the window of the Holy car macaroni. with, like, <laughs> at least three different camera angles outside his car. He's got lo- what looks like some sort of a computer display monitor attached to the dashboard. Appears to be some kind of another readout below it. I have no idea what that is. Maybe a scanner below that. I mean, this guy is loaded up with uh, with equipment, and he says that business is going very well. Uh, we're booming, says Dale Brown. Along, uh, he owns uh, Threat Management Group, along with Recon Security, patrols neighborhoods like Palmer Woods and Black Hummers. He says we're paramilitary, but we're positive. I'm not a vigilante. I am an agent of change. Oh, the Detroit, I like that. Yeah, I like it. The, the Detroit Police Department grappling with deep funding cuts in a city with spiraling budget crisis acknowledges that response times are high and says it's working on a plan to lower them. 
But a spokeswoman for the department insists the rise in justifiable homicides is unrelated. Our plan is to demand more of your tax money. The bureaucrat claims it's not related that uh, the department's slower than ever and homicides, uh, justifiable homicides, are on the rise. The sergeant from the police department says it's not about police response time because often the act has already taken place by the time the police are called. She says, uh, sure. any time a life is lost, we're concerned, but we can't be on every corner in front of every home, and we know there are citizens who will do what they you have know, to to protect themselves. Just by saying the very same thing that this police person is saying here on the air, and this is what we've said all the time, we'll get all this rhetoric like we're anti-cop. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the reality This is the reality of police protection. They're not there to protect you. They're there to clean up the mess. It's a terrifying position in which Kevin Early found himself in November when he was held up at gunpoint outside of his home in an upper middle class area called Rosedale Park. Neighbors called the police, but it was 25 minutes before an officer arrived. So, I mean, you know, here's the the, the, the claim is always going to be made that, uh, you know, it's the it's the poorer neighborhoods here in Rosedale Park. It doesn't seem to matter. Early, the director of criminal justice studies program at this is the guy that was robbed uh, was the director of criminal justice studies program at the University of Michigan's Dearborn campus. Reasoned with the men for more than twenty minutes before he sensed they were about to shoot him in the head. Then he ran as his attackers fled in the opposite direction. Neighbors emerged from the streets, stately homes with shotguns. He said, "All I could think of was my daughter coming home. I didn't want her to see me shot dead." Weeks earlier... Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not worth... I mean, give him the money. <laughs> earlier, Early packed up his home and left Detroit. He hired threat management to supervise the move. He says, where else did the police come to your house after you've been robbed and ask you, why did you call us? Free Talk Live. More coming up. All right, so we'll continue here. Uh, you can bring up whatever you want. The news is out of Detroit, and it's big news that the police are... Uh, pretty much next to worthless in Detroit, responding on an average of 25 minutes on a priority call. So if you just had you know your house robbed, they're going to be there whenever they feel like showing up. So priority meaning like actual crime in progress, someone's being held at gunpoint, that kind of thing. 25 minutes, the average uh, call time there. And in some areas, the city of Detroit has turned off street lights. Uh, they've shut down the Detroit police departments during overnight hours. They're, they're restricting business hours. Hours to like nine to five, basically in Detroit. <laughs> They've got bankers' hours for the cops. So if you need to fill out a report for the police and you work during the daytime, well, you pretty much have to take the day off of work to go down there instead of saying going after work as you would with any other city with twenty-four hour police. And so things have just gotten so bad, people have decided they're going to take things in their own hands. They're forming neighborhood watch groups. They're arming up. They're hiring private protection services organization like uh, Threat Management Center. The Threat Management Specialists, their website, ThreatManagementCenter.com, just went there a a moment ago, and uh, their logo says, Threat Management Specialists, Deterrence, Detection, Defense, Tactical First Aid, Tactical Driving, Tactical Firearms, Tactical Psychology, Tactical Baton, Hand-to-Hand Combat, the only thing that's not tactical, apparently, and Tactical (laughs) Knife and Tactical Law. So uh, these guys are available to the people in Detroit. This is an agency that says business is booming. Things are going very well. And apparently there's private protection services available from as low as 10 bucks per month uh, there in Detroit. I'm interested in learning more about some of those options. Like what is it that you get for 10 bucks a month? What do you get for 200 bucks a month? Uh, what, what is it the market is providing right now? I mean, right now where they've really only had this situation for a period of a, a relatively short period of time, but the market doesn't require a long period of time to step in and take care of things. Right. Ten dollars sounds even affordable after you've paid taxes to your local and city governments. You know, that's a great point, And it was a question I wanted to ask about this. At what point are the Detroit people going to realize that it's time to stop paying the city? When will they finally, you know, because if this threat management company and presumably they probably have a competitor and if not, they will soon. uh, When these private protection agencies start getting more and more business, when are people going to look at that property tax bill, come in and say, well, wait a minute. How come we're what paying these people am again? I getting here? Right. Why am I cutting this check? They've turned off our street lights. The cops don't come around. And when you do finally get the cops to show up, as one guy pointed out after he was held up at gunpoint uh, and waited, managed to hold the criminals there for 20 minutes just through conversation, the cops still didn't show up until five minutes after they left. Uh, then the cops w- roll up on the set and they ask you, why'd you call us? So at what, at what point are the people of Detroit going to decide, 
well, maybe we just won't cut the full property tax check. Maybe maybe we'll only cut half of the property taxes or just completely stop paying entirely. Oh, I, I say do it in baby steps and really confuse the city so that you can point out, like, this is why I'm not paying this, yeah. you know, extra property tax, because I've already replaced that service. Thanks very much. Here's my receipt. Just so you know, I'm hiring somebody else. Get out of here. We don't want your services anymore. It sounds great. I mean, but, you know, it's <laughs> why wouldn't they? I mean, these people I, are ballsy enough to take take the law into their own hands, so-called, defend themselves, arm up, shoot intruders. I mean, at some point, they're going to come to the conclusion that this is not necessary. Paying the government is is a waste of their money. They could take that money they're paying the government and hire threat protection the next level of service. Like, presuming they have different tiers of service, you know, maybe that maybe what they're paying to the government would make the difference between a you know twenty four hour roving patrol in the neighborhood yeah. and not having that. I don't know, but. Uh... I, I I don't disagree with any of this. You're going to get probably better service from threat protection. All it's going to take is for one of these uh, protection groups, the like the neighborhood watch group. Usually, people in these neighborhood watch groups are pretty into it. Like they go out, they get two way radios, they've got uh, communication they can systems. Be, they've got like they're they're saying they're arming up, getting a bunch of weapons. So all it would take would be one meeting or a couple meetings of these this group. You know, maybe there's ten or twelve people in it. These are all homeowners, perhaps. Uh, they all say to themselves, "Okay, let's team up together. Let's stop paying the property taxes. We'll also pool some of the money that we would pay in property taxes. Hire another level of uh, you know security for the neighborhood, what is and then the- tell the city to go pound sand when they come after us." Another advantage. Advantage to what you're talking about is what is the city going to do with another abandoned house? Exactly, another dollar, you know, a house worth a dollar. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, how how do these threat management people stick around? I mean, I was always told that people who compete with providing government services are terrorists. So how how long is it going to be before the uh, city of Detroit starts saying, "Hey, you better not buy from these people because they they are terrorists." It's a good you know, question. They're, they're and trying so, to protect you. It's worth taking. It's worth taking a look at and and you know continuing to observe the situation and see how it plays out. But here you have it. Here you have private protection agencies arising from market demand and supplanting the government. They've all it's already begun. So at what point will the you know in the agorist view, at, if you read Samuel Konkin's uh, agorist agorism a primer or primer or whatever it's called, like he's he did this mm-hmm. thing on agorism way back when. And the idea of agorism is to create alternatives to the government, and that eventually those alternatives will become more popular than the government, and eventually the government will just be left behind. Is that what we're seeing the beginnings of in Detroit? It'll be interesting to watch.